Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous beach sunset. I'm going to teach you how to paint realistic clouds, how to go about creating realistic ocean waves and an ocean. I'm going to teach you how to create a light effect in your work, so how, what tones to use and how to use them, so you can paint this realistic beach landscape in acrylic paints. So let's get into it. So the colours you're going to need for today's tutorial are white, yellow, orange, purple, blue, pink and black. All colours can be mixed from these cool colours. Now I have a large canvas here that all I've done is painted burnt sienna and I thought I would use chalk to kind of show you what I want to do. I want to create a light effect so these arrows going diagonally is going to show you how the light gets darker as it goes towards the corner. So if you think of a light bulb in the middle everything is going to be darker as it gets away from the sun and goes out towards those corners. So we're going to have a two thirds of our canvas as sky and we're going to have the bottom third as the ocean so we've got two thirds as sky and the bottom third as the ocean and we're going to try to create a light effect so all i've done is i've got some wash here and we're going to have some sand here and a little bit of land so if anyone wants to pause this outline and just get a general gist of where everything is we'll get started so i'm just speeding up the video here i'm just going to use some cobalt blue just to put a rough outline of where i want everything to be and it's just so because we're going to um, paint in quite pastel colors for the under painting i'm just using a darker tone just so i know roughly where i want things like my waves and my land to be i'm not going to paint much of the ocean or the sky simply because we're going to use pastel colors and i don't want the dark blue to shine up if we're using things like yellow and orange for the sun so let's get the sky cracking so we're going to do some white for the sun and all i'm doing is using a large brush and I'm just mixing yellow and white together to create a Naples yellow and all I'm doing is just blocking in the light around that sun. So if you imagine the bottom of your horizon is always going to be the lightest and it's going to get darker as we move upwards. So as we move upwards it's going to get darker. So we're going to add some blue lots and lots and lots of white and a dab of black and we should get this lovely pastel light blue so a bit of blue lots and lots and lots of white and a dab of black just to desaturate it and you should get this lovely really nice pastel tone oops i've got a big big hair on my canvas there and we are getting darker as we move up so all we're trying to do is with a big block um, brush we're just trying to block in the area and as we're getting darker we're going to add more blue and a little bit of black to the mix so more blue and a little bit of black still some white and we could create this darker shade of the same tone so we've just got a darker shade of the same tone so if you think what we want to do is as we move towards the corners we want to get darker now how do you blend the two tones we're just going to mix those two tones together the lighter one and the darker one and we're going to create x shapes with our brush so watch we just create like x shapes and all we're doing is we're just merging the two tones together now as always with acrylic paints don't worry if they're streaky they're watery and they're streaky so we're going to go over all this but it's just to block it in and we're going to use the exact same tone just to have the wash on the beach just so we know exactly where the um wet sand and all that sort of wet water sort of really really shallow water comes up onto the beach so we're going to use that exact same tone just to block that in now the darker of the two blues that we used in the corner we're going to use to block in our ocean so all we're going to do is we're just going to go in this corner so just like the far top left and the top right corners we want to make this area nice and dark because this is not going to get as much sunlight because obviously it's further away from the sun so it's going to be cooler now what we're going to do is we're going to make a lavender tone which is purple a little bit of the pink and lots and lots of white and we're going to mix a just a bit warmer tone so purple tiny bit of the pink 
and lots and lots of white to make a sort of lavender tone and all we're going to do is mix that into that lovely color we had from the sky and we're just going to block in this middle part of our ocean so this is going to be the underpainting obviously we're going to neaten everything up but we just want to get everything sort of blocked in and just roughly where we want everything to be so we can get working on making everything a bit neater now just like the far left corner we're just going to merge the two tones and all i'm using is the lighter of the sky color and i'm just merging it into that dark tone so just like we just did now if you see all i'm doing is blending the two tones together i'm just using my big brush and the same if we do something on one side we're just going to mirror it on the other side and there we go so we've blocked it all in and i've dried it with a hairdryer and we're just going to go over everything and just make it a lot neater so we're going to get some yellow lots and lots of white and a tiny bit of our sky blue there and we're just going to create a really really pastels napal yellow so yellow lots and lots and lots of white and a tiny bit of that light blue that we use for the sky just a tiny bit we don't want it to turn green and we're just going to go over everything now you can see just how much brighter that is just going over it now again with acrylics because our sunset we want it to be very very bright you might have to give it two coats because the thing is with Naples yellow you might need to dry it and go over it just simply for the fact that if you're painting a pastel tone onto a dark tone like burnt sienna or light blue you are going to get streak marks in it so a good rule of thumb with acrylics is if you ever get any streaks or it's not blending just get your hair dryer and then just dry it and then go over the same tone with the same tone with a large dry brush and just make sure all those streaks have come out and your tone will look so much nicer blended and much brighter now we're going to get a clean brush and we're going to do the exact same with the blue and i'm just going to leave a tiny gap between the yellow simply because that yellow is still wet and i don't want to mix it in with that blue and i don't want to create green you never see a green sky so we want to just do the exact same technique we're just going over the top with the exact same tone that we created earlier which was blue lots and lots and lots of white and a tiny bit of black and we're going to add more blue to the mix and a tiny dot of black just to darken up the corners so again we're just trying to mirror everything so think of a mirror we're trying to mirror the light and the color that is above on the beach below it so we're just going to mix those two together and we're just going to blend them look watch by creating x's so all I'm doing is I'm using my big brush and I'm just creating X shapes just to blend them. Got to keep getting hairs, all my brush keeps shredding for some reason. So there we go. So nice and blended. So it's really, really easy with using a large round heavy brush. Just take your time. So you want to make sure your sky is nice and blended. Now we're going to take some of that light of the blue and we're just going to add a lot of white to that mix okay and a dot of yellow because we don't want to make it too green we want to have blue lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of yellow and we're just going to merge the two tones together so i'm just doing the exact same trick i'm just using the x shapes with my large brush and i'm just trying to merge the hot of the yellow with the cool of the blue now as I said, with acrylics, if you do get a bit green here, as my one, as it dried, it went a little bit green, you can just rework it later. So don't worry, we can always come back to it and we can always make it. But what we're trying to do is create a lovely transition in the sky where we've got the sun at the bottom and the lightest at the horizon and we gradually get darker as we get up now if you have a big streak like my one don't worry sometimes you get that with acrylics but we can just paint over it we can just create clouds and things later but first off i want to darken up the corners so i'm gonna get some cobalt blue tiny bit of black and a dab of purple and i'm just going to create a really cool bluey tone so i've got that dark sky color and i've just added a little bit of cobalt blue 
and a tiny bit of purple and a little bit of black and I'm going to really darken up my corners because I really really want the emphasis on the light today so on today's tutorial I really want to teach you how to create a really bright light effect in the middle so I need to create a really dark corners and a really dark um, sort of frame for the light effect to show off because you won't notice the bright light if I don't have a dark um, background for it to shine on so all I'm doing look I'm just trying to blend it in so I'm just using some of that sky tone and I'm just trying to create X's and I'm just darkening up the corner but like as I keep saying to you if you ever make a mistake with acrylics just go over it with the same tones that we were using previously and just dry it so just get a hair dryer and just dry it or just do what I'm doing here and just use a big brush and just gently work it into the previous background tone and with the dry brush and a dry background it's really really easy just to blend with a large brush so what we want to do is just create a nice dark corner so we can frame it I'm just gonna get some titanium white and I'm just gonna make my Sun a bit prettier so there we go so I'm going to take yellow and white now so to create a very light Naples yellow but a little bit brighter it's got more yellow than anything in it and I'm just gonna go around the Sun and just make really emphasize that brightness that bit of heat around our Sun so to create heat in your work you want to use things like yellows whites oranges reds and pinks and to create cools in your work you want to use things like purples and pinks and blues so we're going to add some orange tiny bit of orange lots of white we don't want it overbearing orange is very overbearing and we just want to fade that tone to get darker so if you imagine yellow going into orange as it gets darker we just want to fade that out onto the horizon so we're just trying to create a light effect on our horizon now. So we're going to add a little bit of pink to the mix. Now to make pink, you just have to get some purple, a lot of white, a tiny bit of blue and some red. So if you haven't got pink, you can just make it from that. But if anyone else, if you want to buy a pink or rose as it's sometimes called, that's how we do it. So all I did there was I just created pink, a little bit of purple, a dot of black and some white just to create this lovely sort of pastel sort of lavender tone because it's got a little bit of purple and a little bit of black in it it just makes it a bit darker. Now remember acrylics always dry a bit darker so when you're applying it always try to think and remember that because if you're using pastel tones they are going to get a little bit darker as they dry so if you're adding things like black try to add just a dot literally a dot so we're going to take some orange and pink and we're going to mix it into that color we just had a tiny bit of yellow a little bit more orange so we've got a yellowy orange like a peach tone very bright yellowy orange and we're going to create the underside of the cloud that's getting the most light so that's why it's going to be the brightest so that's going to get the area of the cloud that's getting the most heat from the Sun now because it's a little bit further away from the Sun it's going to be very orangey so we're going to try to warm it up by using very bright tones so what I'm doing I'm just creating little specks where I want the sort of flat clouds that you get just on the horizon just the ones that are fading off into the distance so I'm just using my brush I'm just sort of trying to give the impression implying where these little clouds are going to be now I've got a round headed brush and all I'm doing is I'm just turning it sideways sort of like diagonally and I'm just loading it up with paint and I'm just scraping it into the canvas so if you watch I'm just sort of scraping it into the canvas and I'm just creating shapes with it so what I'm trying to do is create the illusion of the hottest part of the cloud that's getting the most sunlight. So we're going to get cooler as we're going upwards. So we're going to get some rose and or pink and we're going to add some purple and a tiny dot of black and a dot of yellow. 
and we're just going to make a darker lavender tone now so a pastel purple and we're just going to create the shadow of these bright clouds so all we're doing is just merging it into the orange that we just had that peachy sort of color and we're just creating the sort of darker side of the clouds so all I'm doing is just blending the two tones together as I say I'm just loading it up on my brush don't worry if the tones mix that's quite cool it's quite good effect because it's just showing you a nice transition so we're going to have purple and pink together and a little bit of cobalt blue and a dot of black just to get even cooler so we're going to get darker as we go up so more cooler so more bluey and purpley as we go away from the sun so all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to create the shapes of clouds. I don't want to cover up too much of the sky, but I also want to give the implication of quite dark shadows going upwards. So just like the sky, if you just think the clouds color transition is going to be the exact same thing. So you're going to go from hot around the sun, which are the orange and the yellows, and we're going to get cooler as we get away into the corners and they're going to be more purpley and blue. So all we're trying to do is just create shapes. So I've just got my brush diagonally and I'm just scraping it into the canvas. Now clouds will come around to people. I know a lot of people struggle with clouds, but the best thing to do is just practice. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the same color. So it was pink, purple, a little bit of blue and a dot of black. Yeah, just practice. Go out and take photos. If you ever have things like a sunset, everyone has a camera phone. Just go out and take as many photos as you can and just practice. It is all about just working on them and just trying to create shapes. The great thing is, is if you have a round headed brush and as you say, you just load your brush up and just scrape it onto the canvas, you can just create shapes. So if you have a reference photo, it does make it a lot handier because you can just get sort of the angles. I like to have the ones in the middle straight and then I go off diagonally to the sides to create a sort of dome sort of look that it looks like it's going around the dome of the earth. So I'm going to get some blue and I'm going to get some cobalt blue, a tiny bit of black and purple and I'm just going to make a bluer, darker colour. So less purple and just a bit more blue. So again, it's a shadow tone that I'm going to use just to create the shadows. All this area of the clouds aren't getting much sunlight, so they're going to be the darkest. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay all the dark shadow tones first, and then we can add some highlights and some stuff over the top. So blue, black, and a little bit of purple, tiny bit of white just to make it not too dark, still a bit pastel -y. And we're just going to try darken up our corners. So just remember, always try to darken up your corners. We want our sunset to look like it's getting darker as it reaches the corners. So blue, purple, dot of black, and a little bit of white just to make it a little bit pastely. And we should get this lovely grey blue colour. It's very cool. So as you can see, it's starting to transition. You've got the hots, the orange around the sun the yellows and then we've got the purple and the blues going off into the corner. So hopefully um, you're getting to learn your tones through my tutorials. So hopefully you're picking up how to use things like blues and purples to add shadows and how to use things like oranges, reds, pinks and yellows and whites to create highlights. And that's all it is. As I say, this is a much more advanced um, acrylic tutorial it's not too advanced it's a bit of a step up from the previous sunset ones we've done and it's just to get you out of your comfort zone it's just to try to get you to push you along I'm not gonna make it too photo really uh, realistic I'm not gonna do every single detail so look, I'm just adding some um, pink to the mix just to create a bridge tone in between the orange and the previous harsh dark tone so as you can see just like as I'm saying to you just learning your tone so look if you want to lighten up an area you just add a bit of heat and if you want to darken up an area you just add a bit of shadow so as I was saying to you we've got 
plenty of tutorials now we've got I think 40 tutorials I will be adding a new one every week so if you haven't liked and subscribed please do so now and also if you could please turn the bell notification on your YouTube button um, just so you know when there's a new video I should be adding a new one every weekend from now on so what I'm doing I'm adding orange and pink together to create a very very bright pinky orangey peach tone and it's a little less orange and yellow than the previous tone and it just bridges in with that fantastic color we just used for the shadow so all we're trying to do is create a transition between the hots and the cold so orange and pink mixed together creates this fantastic tone and I've just added a dot of black just to desaturize it and all we're doing, we're just trying to create the transition between the hots and the colds. And we're using this lovely bright orangey peach tone to create a light effect on our clouds. We want to create highlights. As I say, I'm trying to push you, I'm trying to create, get you out of your comfort zones to make you learn about highlights. And a great way to learn that is by learning um, transitions in tone. So anyone who's got a color wheel at home for painting, what I'm trying to teach you is how to go from the darkest and lightest tones, how to create a jump between the two. So you don't want to jump from really, really bright highlights to really, really dark shadows. You want to have these sort of bridge tones in between that just naturally transition with your eyes. So we're going to add some white to that mix. So orange, pink and white. A little bit more orange than pink and we should create this lovely sort of bright highlight tone. So we've got this highlight tone and all I'm doing is going round areas of the clouds to create where the sunlight is bouncing off and creating a really harsh, bright, sunny um, highlight. So if you imagine, it's just pink, lots of orange and plenty of white and you should get this lovely pastel tone that we're gonna go around areas of our clouds and create a really lovely highlight. Now I specialize in seascapes. I'm known for painting seascapes and I love painting clouds and I love painting sunsets. But if there's anything people want to learn, um, just please put them in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram at mstuartpaintings and hopefully I can include it in the tutorials. Now I'm a landscape artist, so I'm gonna point that out. <laughs> I don't really like doing portraits. So if it's a picture of someone, unfortunately I'm not gonna cover that, but I am gonna do more animals. I'm gonna do more um, landscapes. I'm gonna do um, more different scenes, but I just think it's an easy one to do and teach you with sunsets because um, with sunsets, they have a great transition between darks and lights. So all I'm doing here is I'm getting um, some white and yellow to make a very bright highlight tone. So lots of white and some yellow. And just like that peach highlight, we're just doing the same with yellow. Now these are all the areas where the light beams around the cloud. It almost creates like an outline. And we want it to have odd clouds that are just getting pure sunlight. And because of that, they're creating these gorgeous highlights, these really, really bright highlights. But as I keep saying to you, it's all in the transition. So by neatening up areas like we're just going over, as I said many times with acrylics, sometimes you just need to give areas a second coat of paint or a fur coat, just simply because they're very watery, they're very thin, unlike oil paints. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing that same color, but I've just added more white. So lots and lots and lots of white and a dab of yellow. And just where my sky has gone a bit green, it's gone a little bit green because we had that light blue tone. I'm just going around that area and just trying to make it a little bit more brighter and yellow. So that's what I keep saying to you, with acrylics, they are fantastic and they are very, very cheap and they are very, very easy. So they are perfect for beginners and medium artists who are looking to get better. And as you advance, 
they are perfect to step up to oil paints and then oil paints and acrylics combined are absolutely fantastic because you can use acrylics to paint something very very quickly and you can use oils over the top when the acrylics are dry to make your work look really realistic so i've got some purple some blue a tiny bit of orange and a little bit of black to create a really sort of warm gray and i'm gonna just go around the very corners of my painting with my clouds to really darken them up so i want to make that transition really dark just so again we're trying to focus people the viewers eyes on our sun and by creating dark highlights in the corners we're going to hopefully draw your eyes to the middle so if you think all we're doing we're just layering on shadows and highlights so we're adding darker um, shadows and then we're adding highlights over the top and then we're just going back and just reworking areas till we get them perfect and there's no harm as i say if you want to go more photorealistic with your work you can always take photos of clouds and then you can just do every little streamer every little bit coming off and you can create these wonderful photorealistic um paintings but as i say i just want to teach you the basics today but we are going to make it pretty real compared to the previous tutorials but i still i don't want to make it too hard but i do want to make it a bit more advanced for you people because i know you're crying out to learn which is a fantastic i'm really happy there's so many great artists out there who are looking to learn so look by just adding a little bit of orange to the mix you can again just bridge tones to create these shadows so this is a bit more brownier tone and all it is is just by adding a little bit of orange to that warm gray you can create a light, a sort of tan color, and just create hot highlights. So that's all it is, is creating dark shadows and creating highlights, and just creating the illusion of all these little floater clouds, and then just blending the two tones together. So creating a bridge tone between the hots and the colds. Now remember, if any of you are creating your own versions of my tutorials, um, please um, tag me um, at mshirt paintings on instagram and please dm me so i know about it because i get loads of messages and um, notifications per day and if you tell me and i know about it i can share it because i have over 10,000 followers on the good old instagram and i think it's a fantastic thing to do is to share your versions of my work so i've even created a hall of fame section of my instagram stories where i like to share off other artists um, versions of these tutorials so please 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 if you do do the um, tutorials please share them because it's a great way to meet other artists it's a great way to show off your work and it's a great way for me to see how well the tutorials are being received some of you guys are absolutely brilliant artists and I think some of you just need a bit of confidence and a bit of um, other people seeing how wonderful you are and how talented you are and it can really boost your confidence by seeing others really warm to you and maybe give you a follow and give you a like and you can meet other artists um, that may benefit you and opportunities might arise from it so please if you do do these tutorials and you do a version of it please tag me and I'll happily share it on my stories so look it's getting brighter in the middle so we're going to create just using white we're just going to go over the top just to make our Sun look amazing and we're just going to get some of the brighter yellow and white and we're just going to really emphasis this area to make it look almost fluorescent we're going to try and make it look as bright as we can by just going over the top with the same tone and just make that sun of our sunset just look radiant and beaming out like a, a torch almost and what we should be doing just like at the beginning where i showed you the um the um, outline what we should be doing now is really framing the painting so I've measured my horizon and I've used some painting tape and I'm just going to use some of the sky color just to fill in bits of the canvases that we've missed 
So yeah, as I was saying, so we should now, it's really starting to frame, as I was saying at the beginning of the tutorial, where we had the sun in the um, bottom of the horizon, and we get darker into the corners, you can see now it's starting to take shape, and you can see how it draws your eye towards that sun by just having the darker corners. So I'm just going to mix some yellow, a tiny bit of orange, and lots of white, and I'm just going to go onto the horizon and I'm just going to create again these floating clouds that sort of sit at the bottom of the horizon and it just just yet more yellow towards the sun and a little bit more orange the further away from the sun so I'll just go I'm running out of palette <laughs> so lighter towards the sun and I'm going to use that same color actually for the sky because it's really really nice so yellow a tiny dot of orange because orange is very overpowering and lots and lots of white so you create this really nice warm tone and we're just going to go around that area just to emphasize it to make it look like the sky is getting lit up by that lovely sun now I've just realized because I'm doing all this myself I'm learning as I go along I've never done YouTube I've never filmed any of myself painting um, I've never known anything about this subscribe and notification till recently all YouTube is completely new to me so don't forget to press that bell <laughs> um, if you go on my banner on my page it has my Instagram and my Facebook I have a Facebook as well I never use it but I do have a Facebook um, so yeah you can um, literally go straight to the Instagram and straight to my Facebook if you do do your own versions and tag me so I'm getting some black some orange and some purple and I'm trying to create a really dark warm gray so purple lots of black and some orange and you should get this really dark warm gray now and all we're doing is just going back over the top just really emphasizing these clouds and these are going to be the really harsh shadows now right at the top so this area is getting barely any sunlight and that's why it's sucking all the color out and it's getting really really dark so what I'm doing I'm just again just creating shapes I'm just emphasizing areas of the painting but I'm trying to stick to the um, same principle where I want the corners to be the darkest so I really want to frame the painting by coming down towards the Sun so again, all I'm doing is trying to blend it into the previous tones, but leave gaps in the underpainting. So the tones that we've used previously are shining through and it's just emphasizing areas just to make the edges and some of the areas just look like they've got shadows. And you can soften it up, as I say, you can use the previous tones to just soften it up so if you've got really dark jumps just like i was saying before you can always use the previous tone just like we did with the sky remember we had the darkest blue and we had the lighter blue so why i've got that tone it gets more orange as we mix it with the previous tone and more that warm gray that's darker i'm gonna just block in the land and i'm just gonna use the more orange Part of that gray to just bridge the two tones together so again just add a little bit of orange to that mix and it will turn more brown and you can use that as a jump between the darks and the lights so if you let it dry and remove your tape you should have a lovely sky pretty much down now please dry your work so look it's nice and dry so you can apply tape you don't want to apply tape over a wet painting and when you rip it off you will rip half your underpainting that you just did last and please measure your horizon so it's nice and straight now don't worry if your ocean has got lots of yellow like mine has because we're going to straighten it all up and we're just going to repaint it so we're going to take some blue that we did previously which was the sky color of the top corners so we're going to take some blue which was white lots lots of white some blue and a dab of black and we're going to take some lavender tone do you remember we used the lavender which was purple lots of white dab of blue and a dab of black so all we're doing we're just going to neaten up everything now we've got that tape on we're just going to create the underpainting so like just like we did with the sky we're going to take our time and we're going to create 
a lovely underpainting and then we can put all the waves of our water and our ocean our sea and then we can create the beach and the great thing is is our sunset combined with the beach going into the sand will create a light effect and will create a really realistic composition so for our beach sunset we want to create a light effect on the ocean coming towards the beach so how do we do that so what we're going to do is we're going to darken up the corners by using the darker shade of blue using the lighter shade of blue going into the purple so look all i'm doing is blending it so think of a mirror and we're going to have that lighter purple in the middle because that's going to be right where the sun is so the area of the middle is going to be getting the sunlight so it's going to be brighter than the edges so just like the clouds think of what i've been saying like a mirror we want to mirror that onto the ocean seawater so all we're doing is we're just creating the underpainting before we create the waves and then what we'll do is we'll add the waves over the top and we'll create the ocean the wash and the beach and we will combine the two between our sunsets to make it look really realistic so all I'm doing, I'm just using the two tones and I'm blending them together. So I'm using that dark blue in the corners and the edges because they're the areas that are getting the less, um, they're cooler because they're getting the least amount of sunlight. And I'm using the lavender sort of light pastel purple in the middle because that's going to get the most sunlight. And then what we'll do is we'll, as I say, will create a um, light effect in the middle using the same tones as we have in the clouds. So all I'm using is the darker of the two blues just to create an edge of our water. So as the wash comes up against the beach, I'm just using the darker of the two to create an edge and I'm just using the lighter of the two blues to just blend that back in. So there we go, we've got this lovely transition. So all we're going to do is take some purple and some cobalt blue so purple and cobalt blue and a bit of that darker sky color and a little bit of black and we should create this really lovely dark blue so we've got this dark purpley blue and we're going to create waves so i'm going to go right up to the horizon so right up to my tape and where we get to the horizon i'm going to try to leave gaps in the underpainting and all i'm doing is just creating zigzags little lines with my flat brush so i want to get very flat at the horizon and then i want to go a bit diagonally as i come down so as we come down to the beach where we had that lovely cobalt blue outline i'm just going to rework it i'm just going to put it back so we're going to have a wave coming up here to the shore and we're going to have a big wave coming up here and we're going to get sort of the shadow as the wave is facing away from the sun it's going to have dark shadows so all i'm doing is i'm using a flat brush and i'm creating sort of scoops so imagine an ice cream scooper i'm creating these little diagonal sort of semicircles so little scoops so i'm creating little scoop lines and i'm just using the flat brush to create flat lines so as i say the more you go up to the horizon the flatter you want to get but by using a flat brush and just creating zigzags so i'm doing look, i'm creating zigzags just loads of little shapes we're trying to create the texture of the water so i'm in the zone here i'm going a bit quick <laughs> so i'm a bit sorry but um when i'm in the zone i sort of just do it naturally without thinking it's subconscious just when you've done millions and millions of, of hours of paintings you can just do it subconsciously so look all i'm doing is i'm using that darker tone just to emphasize waves and we're just getting flatter as we get towards the horizon and we're creating some diagonal ones and because we've got that lovely underpainting what that's doing is tricking your eye so now we've got these darker shadows it's creating a 3d effect to make your water look real so blue purple and a little bit of black now all you have to do if you want to really create dark shadows is just add a little bit more black 
you can create really dark shadows. But we want to leave gaps in the underpainting. So by creating all these zigzags and straight lines, what we're doing is trying to create texture. Now why I've got that dark color, I'm just going to go over the edge with a really dry brush and just brush it in because I'm really trying to frame that edge and I'm going to do the same on this side. So I again draw your eyes towards my sun. So by framing the composition and darkening up the edges, what I want you to do is look straight at my sun. And also the reason I'm darkening up the yellow um, the yellow, the left hand um, corner is because that's where I'm going to sign it. Now I'm going to add some orange to the mix to create a brown tone. Now the reason I'm doing that is the sunlight is going to be hitting these waves. So we want to get lighter in tone as we move towards the sun. But it's the same principle. So using the flat brush, what we want to do is try to create straight lines as you get towards the horizon. And again, that will trick the viewer's eyes. So all by just adding heat, by using adding orange to create a sort of lovely brownie tan color, you can just go over areas and just emphasize them in that color just to make it look like the sunlight is hitting them. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see how that works. Now, unfortunately, it's off camera, but all I'm doing is adding more orange. So I'm adding more heat to the mix. So look, I'm getting oranger. Oranger, is that a word? <laughs> more orange. So my wife's Spanish, and all I can think of is naranja. <laughs> so um, I'm adding more orange to the mix, and I'm getting lighter as I move towards the sun. So I'm just doing the exact same trick where I'm doing these flat lines to emphasize the waves and I'm leaving gaps in the underpainting, but I'm just getting more orange towards the sun. And again, I'm just using that tan color to bridge between the previous darker blue color. So look, it's just bridging the two colors together. So again, just like I was saying with the clouds, by keeping your tones, and if you can't, you can just remix them and try to blend the hots into the darks. You create this great seamless transition. So we're gonna take some yellow and orange. I've got a bit of a mucky brush here. And we're just gonna make it a bit more yellow. It's a bit yucky, I think my brush was a bit dirty. I think I had too much of the previous tone, but never mind. As I say, with acrylics, you can just paint over it, so it's no bother. So all I'm trying to do is just warm up this area because this is going to be right under the sun. So again, how do we warm things up? We're going to make them brighter. So we're going to use yellow, bright yellow. So I don't know what yellow that is. I'm not very good with names of paints. I'm sorry. I'm, some people are very precise. I watch a few people on here. Let's move our tape who use special brushes and special paints. And I'm nothing like that. I'm just really quick and easy, really chilled, really laid back. So look, all I'm doing is getting some yellow and I'm just coming down and I'm trying to emphasize the heat and the glare of that sun. And what I'm trying to do is create the sort of shimmer effect of the water. So now as we come towards the beach, the sunset is sort of imprinting and mirroring on our beach. So all we're trying to do is mirror it onto that wash. So if you imagine that wash is kind of like a big puddle, it's almost like where the wave peels back, you get a big puddle of water that's very, very shallow. And by just adding a little bit of orange, we're just gonna get darker because we're moving away from the sun. So as we move towards the beach, we're just gonna add a little bit more heat, a bit more orange. So yeah, so if you imagine the wash on the shore is like a big puddle, so we wanna reflect the sky. So what we're trying to do is almost create like a mirror. So imagine that water is like a mirror. And what we're trying to do is to just reflect the sky on the beach. So it's an easy one to remember. So if you're doing any painting, if this was a, um, a red sky, you would just do the wash the same color. It's a really easy technique. You just want to try to mirror it. So look, all I'm doing is adding yellows and oranges together just to create that peachy tone that we did. And what I'm trying to do, if you see the uh, cloud next to the sun, just above the sun, which has that yellow into orange into um, peach, I'm just trying to mirror that colors onto our shore here. 
So as it comes towards the beach and we get this lovely wash, um, I'm just trying to edge this water and I'm just trying to create a sort of mirror effect. So we're just trying to create heat onto that water. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to shade with my brush, very, very little paint. I'm sort of glazing it. It's a great technique with acrylics. What you can do is get barely any paint on your brush and your brush has got no water on it. It's just very, very dry and just almost like a crayon color in areas. If you want to warm up areas, all you do is just go over the top. And if you want to darken areas, you can do the same. Now, unfortunately, the subscribe button, that dafty rascally thing was in the way. All I'm doing here is I'm adding some purple and orange to create a lovely sort of tan color. And I'm just covering in that burnt sienna. And this is going to be our beach sand. So all I'm doing is just mixing some orange and purple together to make some brown. And I'm just going to get some of the sky color, which was white and a little bit of blue and a dab of black and I'm just going to create the wash coming up on the beach and I'm just going to neaten it up where we've drawn in our beach it's got a bit flumpy so I'm just going to create sort of the sort of roundness of it because it creates those sort of little round um, sort of edges of the wave as it comes up onto the wash so our beach is starting to take shape and we want to try, try to create the shimmer so all I'm doing is I'm going back and forth sometimes with painting I've said this many a times with um, the tutorials I find it really hard to talk my way through I hope I'm doing a good job but sometimes it is just instinctual. If anyone's seen the film, I watched the film Whiplash recently about a musician and a coach. And it's very, very hard to teach someone how to do something. Um, it's almost instinctive. But the way you become instinctive is by just doing it. So by practicing, 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 you will do it subconsciously. So anything you want to learn, just engulf yourself in it and just keep doing it and do it till it becomes automatic. So I'm just adding a bit of blue, purple and black and I'm just going over that area. I think it's just a bit too warm. So I'm just going to darken it up with some blue and black. So just like the colors we use for the waves, I'm just going to darken up that corners, just make it a little bit less black a bit more blue I think it would look better yeah but basically trying to do something by practicing over and over and over again till you can do it without thinking so think of all good athletes they literally do something over and over and over again thousands and thousands of times like kicking a football or throwing a basketball whatever they're doing and when they get to the game they just don't think they literally just perform simply because they've done it so many times so it's the same with any skill painting riding a bike you want to get so to the point where you can just do it automatically so i'm going to take some pink and purple and blue and i'm just going to bridge the tone i'm just going to create some lighter shadows sort of a bridge shadow to just mix in between yeah so i hope I am explaining these tutorials well, but I do wonder because, as I say, I I can do this through hours and hours of practice, so I'm hopefully breaking it down and hopefully you can all understand. So while I've got that tone, I'm just going to darken up that one bit of land, but I'm just going to blend it into the previous tone because I like the fact it gets orange, um, oranger <laughs> towards that sun. It looks like a light effect that that cliff top is sort of hitting the light but it's still I want a dark edge just to frame it so while I've got that color I'm just going to create some darker waves with it just to really emphasize them just so they really really look dark so I'm going to move over to a flat brush and now we've got this lovely light effect I'm just going to get some black 
and some blue and some purple and I'm just going to really darken up these waves on the left hand side. I want to make it really really dark on this left hand side because A I'm going to sign it there and I want my lovely signature and all its glory to stand out but B just because it's not going to be getting as much light I just want to really make it um, striking. I just want to really really frame the composition by darkening up this area. But as I said previously, you can just darken areas or lighten up areas just by sort of glazing it. So putting on very little paint and just going over the top of bits you've really worked. So if that's the waves or that's the actual underpainting, you can just darken up your palette or you can lighten it up and just go over bits so all I'm doing I'm just darkening this left hand corner of the the under part of the wave that's not getting any light because that's in the shadow and I'm just going to create some detail and just kind of try to work out the water because I'm kind of um, doing the water through my imagination I'm just kind of making it up as I go so as it comes up to the shore this sort of ridge is getting very little sun so it's going to be very very dark so all I'm doing is just trying to create sort of the illusion of detail as I say I don't want to go too photorealistic so I'm just trying to just create scrapes and sort of bobbles in the sand where you get sort of shadows and you get sort of ridges but as I was saying previously sometimes um, with painting you have to do a layer step back see if it works do a layer step back see if it works and it's very hard to teach that it's not like a one two three step it can be one two back to one then jump to five and then then go back and forth so as I said previously it's hard to explain because sometimes you just got to sort of feel your way out and figure it out so I'm just using some purple and blue and a tiny bit of black just to create sort of the dark sort of rim of the water where the water comes up it leaves sort of a rim of wet sand and all I'm doing is I'm moving over to a fan brush my one's a bit beaten up here it's a bit wonky it doesn't look like a fan it looks like a dead fan and all I'm doing is I'm just trying to create the illusion of sort of um, ripples in the water where it's coming up against the shore now as I say I was gonna go pretty detailed but to tell you the truth I just couldn't be bothered <laughs> Um, I don't want to make it ridiculously detailed where you're sitting here for like four hours while I do every single ripple and every single thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to cover the basics and make it pretty detailed. So I gave up with the fan brush because I just thought, do you know what? Let's not make it too complicated. We, you don't, you don't want to be bored to death. So I'm just going to get some black and blue and I'm just going to really darken up that wave. Just using their fine liner and just going to create this shadow. As I say, I'm very new to all this editing and um, bits and bobs uh, with video and YouTube. I used to do it when I was young, and then 20 years went past, and believe it or not, it was a banker at one point. So, going back to art and um, making videos and painting is something um, I've only done in the last three or four years. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So if I can paint like this after literally having 20 years off and reteaching myself thanks to people on YouTube, you can all do it. So as I say, I hope these videos are giving you confidence. I hope these tutorials are really helping you. And I hope people like me and all the other fantastic artists on YouTube are showing you guys that you can all do this and you can all do it at home. So all I'm doing, I'm just using some of that sky color just to soften it up. I'm using a little blender brush and all I'm doing, I'm just softening up that crazy fan area that I just went and put some detail on because as I say, I don't want to go too detailed. I think it would just ruin it and then make the tutorial really boring. <laughs> so as I say, we're just trying to go back and forth by using the lighter of the blue sky color, so white a little bit of blue and a dot of black and using some of that lavender tone what we can do is just cry, try to create sort of glimmer sort of the sort of um, sheen on this corner of the wash so just by adding a bit of white to the mix 
try to just create we're trying to create the illusion of like the shimmer of that sort of reflected puddle to give a really nice prominent edge so by just adding a little bit of white and that light blue and a bit of lavender we're just trying to lighten it up we just want to try to give that edge just sort of a striking look just so it looks like it's shimmering as the water, the wet sand and the water mix so we've got some orange and pink again and where we've just worked it as I say we're just going over the top again so as I say it can be quite annoying sometimes but it is just figuring it out sometimes you've just got to go back over the top of areas lighten things up darken it out to get that mirror effect and it is just literally working it out so all I'm doing is just adding some purple and some orange a tiny bit of blue just to create sort of a nice pastel -y tone and again I'm just trying to create sort of the sort of rivets and debris in that sort of wash and I'm just getting some yellow I'm trying to mirror the sun I think sometimes with me because I'm doing these so quick because I appreciate you're watching at home and you'll want to learn but you don't want to sit here for hours I forget to do things like clean my brush and <laughs> do just standard things so sometimes I get mucky paint but as I say with acrylics they're so forgiving it's not like oils where you've been oh no and they've all mixed and you've just created a puddle colour with acrylics you can just dry them and just paint over them so it's no bother so look, there we go we've got some yellow and orange now mixing together and that is starting to fantastically look so let's put some of that lighter blue back in and let's just create the shimmer on that corner of that ridge and let's just make the ridge more prominent and rounded just to make it look more wave like wow there we go and that's starting to look fantastic that's looking much more 3d now so as i say it's just trying to feel your way out try to work it don't be discouraged if it takes a few attempts it all comes with practice so we're going to take some orange and purple and we're just going to lighten up this part of the sand as it comes up onto our beach this is the sunlight hitting the sand so just by leaving gaps in the underpainting and we're just using a flat brush i'm just trying to create texture and the illusion of light and then i'm going to get purple black and blue and a little bit of orange and i'm just going to do a darker tone so where we've just done a highlight in the corner just like we framed the um left hand corner we're now going to frame the right hand corner so all i'm doing is just using that shadow tone just to complement that right hand corner and again just frame the piece and i'm just going to darken up this left hand corner as well just with the same tone because i'm just trying to create a shadow so I just want to make this area, just like I was saying before, you can just glaze areas just with barely any paint on your brush, just hardly any water. You can just glaze an area in the colour just to darken an area up. So just like we've got the sunlight coming out of the um, under the sun, we've got these darker corners now. And I'm just going to use that tone just to create a really nice dark wave now. I'm just trying to figure out how I want the waves. I'm just trying to figure out how I can make them nice and prominent just so they stick out. Just so it makes the work look a bit more 3D. So as you see I'm jumping up and down on my seat. Because I'm getting up just to take a step, a few steps back just to make sure that the painting looks real. Sometimes like here the painting looks great but compared to how it looks a few steps back it will look much more realistic because obviously we're zoomed in to film this and you're picking everything up because this is a 4k camera but if you take a few steps back the painting should trick your eyes and look pretty damn realistic just thanks to the tones so as I say all I'm doing I'm trying to create the impression of big waves coming up to the shore so some of the big ones I'm just going over and I'm just creating implications. So where we've got them already, all I'm doing is just using that darker tone just to create bigger ones. So the composition and the painting is starting to come really, really 
together now. So if you want to lighten areas up, uh, all you have to do is just take some of the um, lighter tones and just poke holes back in your sea. So where the water is coming up towards the beach, if you want to lighten areas up, just like we darkened areas up, just get very little paint, put it on a dry brush. I'm using a blender brush here, which is just a really soft bristle brush. And all I'm doing, I'm just almost glazing over the top just to try to match the light in the sky with the light on the beach. So our sunset, our beach sunset, is starting to take effect by just mirroring what's in the sky with the beach and the shore. So we've got this lovely light effect, so we're just going to finish it off for the next 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get some white and I'm just trying to create the illusion of the sun sitting on the water. Now sometimes you get a um, lovely reflection downwards. So we get this lovely shimmer where the water creates almost like a line going straight down from the sun so we really want to emphasize that and draw the viewers eyes towards it so all I'm doing I'm just gonna spend the next 10 minutes just neatening up everything so just things like my sky where I've missed areas I'm just gonna spend two, two, few, two or three minutes just fixing areas so I'm just darkening up areas or lighting up areas and if you make a mistake always have some baby wipes handy because you can always just fix it as I say acrylics are brilliant they're very very easy if you dry your painting and you make a mistake you can just paint over it you can just wipe it away with a baby wipe so don't be afraid to experiment don't be afraid to try things so all I'm doing is using some of that yellow orange and lots and lots of white just to really glaze this area and the horizon just to make it look like the sun is really popping down on the water so I really want to create the sort of the glimmer of the water but I just want to do the cloud highlights first so I'm going to take some white and a little dab of yellow and I'm just going to outline these nearest clouds because I want to make it look really really realistic so this is all the light that goes around the cloud and almost outlines it so you have such bright light from the sun if you imagine the sun is white and as the light cools it gets yellowy and orange and then into pink and purple and then blue what we want to do is create that light effect that's going around the cloud and it kind of pierces it and goes creates an outline so what we're doing is we're getting yellow and lots and lots and lots of white so more white than yellow and all we're doing is just outlining these nearest clouds so if I zoom in so you can see it I'm just outlining it I'm just creating shapes just like we did with the actual clouds itself I'm just creating shapes and sort of splodges and I'm just outlining it with this really bright tone now again because it's acrylics sometimes because white is so pastel it's going to pick up the underpainting below it so sometimes you just got to give it a second layer so just like we did with the sun you just got to sometimes go around it but this sort of luminous effect if I zoom in some more it's gonna by just going over the top so maybe just drying it with your hairdryer and just going over the top we can create this sort of luminous effect where the sun looks almost real because we are just going round these highlights and just get, giving it two or three coats of paint just to make it look so bright. So as I say, with acrylics, just give it an extra coat of paint, just show it some love, show it some TLC, just go over the top and just make it look extra bright, extra funky. And we can have some, look, we can have some little ones shooting off and what it will do, it will really emphasize your clouds and give it a 3D look. Now what we're going to do is just add a little bit more yellow to the mix. So a bit less white and a bit more yellow, but still very, very pale. And we're just going to go upwards. So just think of even your highlights are getting cooler. So that's why we're adding more yellow. And we're just going to do the same effect. So some of these clouds we're just going to outline. And all this is, is where the sunlight is just so powerful and so strong. It's just creating these gorgeous streaks in the air and just hitting these clouds. So we're trying to make it look really realistic. 
so as I say, it's more advanced this tutorial. We did do a a quite an advanced um, beach sunset recently, and we've done lots of ones with the palm trees. If anyone's interested, there's plenty on the um, my homepage. Um, I've even created playlists for everyone. So if you're looking for a certain thing, we've got we've got how to paint waves and sunsets, and we've also got things like how to paint uh, landscapes. So look, all I'm doing, I'm trying to create, just like we did with the wash on the beach, I'm trying to create that on the actual ocean itself. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to create this sort of really, really powerful, just like the highlights, this really almost luminous sort of effect. So by just using the same tone, so yellow and lots and lots and lots of white, just to create a really, really powerful tone and then just by using yellow and orange to create a peach tone just to soften it up so just the finishing touches trying to get this glimmer just by getting some pure white just trying to find my way so just coming straight down just blending it into the ocean sometimes when the sun is set flat on the ocean it almost looks like it's blending into it, it almost sort of fades into it so all I'm trying to do is just try to create that sort of effect where you've got this really, really bright sun coming down. So we're just using the same colours as I was using for the highlights for the clouds. I'm just trying to make it really, really look bright. So that yellowy white, just making it look like it's just that light is just whacking that wave. Just get some orange, a little bit of yellow, some orange and yellow. Just create this lovely sort of tangerine colour. Just going to put some more heat in here. Just really emphasise the heat from the sun. Try to match that nearest um, cloud. So as I say, I'm just reworking this area so let's just add some yellow so nearer the sun it's going to be more yellow just blend the two tones together look at that nice and blended really really easy got this fantastic light effect so just by adding some orange and pink together just the final stage just to bridge the heat and the hot tones with these cooler tones it just makes the sunlight look like it's coming through and just coming down here onto this ridge just so it matches so as I say it's all about just trying to match what's in the sky so just by using yellow and white can come straight down so yellow and white and just try to create that sort of shimmer that the sun sends downwards just a bit more yellow just to really emphasize it just to make it look super bright why not so what we've matched in the ocean we're going to match on the beach so look at that it's looking fantastic Let's just take some white just come straight down using the flat brush I'm just leaving tiny gaps just so it looks like waves just creates that sort of shimmer and all I'm gonna do just to finish it off I'm gonna take some black purple and blues but loads of black and just get a fan brush I'm just gonna create some ripples just some terrain just with the fan brush just dab in my canvas just to create some texture on my sand here as it comes up on the beach but that looks fantastic I think I think it's starting to really really look well I think that is an awesome composition an awesome painting and as I say you can go more detailed you can 
do every single divot of the of the sand you can create more light you can create more clouds but as a general composition just to teach you I think that looks fantastic so I've signed it in the bottom left hand corner now so we've got our lovely darkened corners so that's why my signature goes there and we've created this beautiful light effect so we've got these lovely darkened corners and what that should do is draw you straight to that Sun You've learned how to create a gradient in your sky where you've got this lovely um, transition in your clouds. So you know how to do really realistic clouds. You know how to create an ocean. You know how to do an underpainting and then create the shadows and the highlights on the top. You know how to do sh shadows and highlights on your clouds. And you've just created this amazing acrylic landscape beach sunset painting so please like and subscribe if you haven't already as i say my name is murray we have loads and loads of painting tutorials here on my page so please click my logo and check out my page um, don't forget to share the videos so more artists can see them here on youtube and i just want to say thank you very much for watching and take care so see you later guys bye